The new Big 12. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. If you enjoy the content here, please hit the like button. Even if you don't agree with me, if you like what we present, best discussion, debate, and analysis, please like the video and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Okay, much talk about the Big 12 expansion going west to the Pac-12, bringing in the four corners or more. Let's check out what the new Big 12 could look like if they bring in the four corners or even more Pac-12 schools coming to the Big 12. All right, let's look at the Big 16, if you will, probably keeping the brand name of the Big 12, plus the four corners. Split it into two eight-team divisions, and this is what you've got. You've got the western side of Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, BYU, Kansas, Kansas State, and Iowa State. That's the best way I could figure out to keep obvious Rivalries together with Arizona State, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, BYU, all together right there. Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State, a natural rival with the two Kansas schools as well. If you move it to the other division, Cincinnati, UCF, West Virginia, Houston, you've got TCU, Texas Tech, and Baylor, Oklahoma State as well. So we keep all the Texas schools together. We keep Oklahoma State. Now that Oklahoma's gone, they've lost their big bedlam rivalry with Oklahoma. We keep them with the Texas schools and that foundational Big 12 feel. Of course, West Virginia, UCF, Cincinnati, all on islands to a certain extent. But uh, again... We bring them all together because there's Cincinnati, UCF. Uh, there's a history there, and West Virginia and Cincinnati are just four hours away, and that could build into a rivalry. Of course, Cincinnati and West Virginia played for so many years in the old Big East. So yes, I also considered the pod system. You got 16, you got four pods of four. It works out perfectly in regards to math and optics, but... You can come up with some really good pods. Actually, you can come up with three great pods, but it's difficult putting the fourth together and really screwing those programs having to cross the country and play each other because UCF, West Virginia, Cincinnati are on such islands, especially UCF and then the West Virginia and Cincinnati. That could be a burgeoning rivalry, possibly. They are just four hours apart and, of course, have a long history going back to the Big East days. So, for example, you've got a really nice pod with Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and BYU. You've got a nice pod looking at the two Kansas schools, Iowa State and Oklahoma State, keeping that old Big 12 feel together. You've got four Texas schools. That would be a great pod, Houston, TCU, Texas Tech, and Baylor. But, again, it's those stragglers out in the east that make it difficult for the pod system. If you can come up with a pod system, please leave your selections below in the comments section. In regards to scheduling, I think it's pretty straightforward. You go with the division format of playing the other seven teams in your division. You play a nine-game conference schedule. Therefore, you rotate the other two games through the eight-team opposite division, and you're going to get to play everybody within the college career of the average college football player that's four years. Of course, with the transfer portal, early entries to the NFL draft, you can't guarantee everything, but then again, that's their decision. But you get to play everyone within a four-year standard college football career in the conference. Also, look at last year. We'll just play out what it might have looked like last year because you've got, of course, the scheduling would be different, but who would have won these two divisions? Well, you would have had either Utah or Kansas State. They both lost two games in their respective conferences. So either Utah or Kansas State would have won the one division. And then the other division would have been won by, of course, TCU as they moved on to the college football playoffs with just one loss in the conference championship game. All right, now on to the Big 12 plus the four corners plus... Oh, man, if they get Oregon and Washington, this is a really good conference and it's expansive. Let's check this out. Let's go to the Big 12 18. So in this situation, we do have four pods or four divisions, however you want to look at it. Two have four teams and two have five teams. In your westernmost division, Washington, Oregon, Arizona, Arizona State stay together, and Colorado, of course, is currently 
a division rival of both the Sun Devils and the Wildcats. Our next division looks like this. All the Texas schools, there they are. Houston TCU, Baylor, and Texas Tech. Our next division's got a real Big 12 old school feel with Oklahoma State, Kansas, and Kansas State, but we also have BYU and Utah, two huge rivals. Of course, it's the Holy War, and we keep them together. So we've got a real stretch with the fourth division or pod, but at the same time, it, it makes as much sense as it possibly can. Again, Cincinnati and UCF come from the American Conference. They have been rivals for a few years now. you got West Virginia involved, and they are the closest school to Cincinnati. So you try to build something there, and you attack on Iowa State, and there you've got your fourth division slash pod. So once you get to a certain amount of teams in a conference, you have to determine a way to justifiably determine a conference champion. And we've got conference championship games at this point. But once you get past that 14, 16, 18, uh, near 20 number, you got to basically implement a playoff format. You just don't play enough conference games to get it done otherwise. So we're taking the four division slash pod champions and playing a mini playoff to determine the conference champion. Based on last year's results, we've got these pod champions. We've got Washington over Oregon. They had a better conference record in the Pac-12. You've got TCU, obviously, in that division. You've got Kansas State coming out of their division. Then you've got uh, either Cincinnati or UCF. UCF won the regular season battle and moved on to the conference championship game in the American. In terms of scheduling, it's pretty simple. You got to play everyone in your division or pod. That's three games. Okay, you got six other games. If you rotate those six games through the other, whether it's 13 or 14 teams in the conference, you do get to see everybody every three years. So it's not quite to the level of some of the scheduling formats that we've seen re released most recently in the ACC and what the Pac-12 did last year with like a 366 or a 355 model where you see everyone in the conference every other year. But we're out to 18 teams at this point, so that is impossible. So you basically see every team in the conference at least once every three years. And that's much better than what we've got currently in college football, where the ACC and the ACC and the SEC teams uh, don't meet for once every seven years. So there you go. There's the new Big 12, whether that's just the four corners of Arizona, Arizona State, Utah and Colorado coming on board, or the big coup in grabbing Washington and Washington. Oregon. Your thoughts below. Not necessarily about the expansion. We've talked about that, covered that in other videos, but more about if this would happen. That's the best format I'm coming up with right now. Would love to hear your suggestions and comments right here at the Voice of College Football.